Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Saturday, October 19, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. The transformation happens when we begin cleansing our minds of old stories and embrace the truth of who we really are, Claress, mindfulness teacher. Everything you see happening is the consequence of that which you are, David R. Hawkins. This universe will point our attention in a single direction, the light of awareness which it describes as being just like the light from a movie projector. This light is pure, clear, and responsible for the images you perceive as reality. The great imagination of the mind colors this pure white light, giving it meaning, perception, and interpretation. The mind is like the film running through your movie projector, creating your personal vision of what reality is. In the darkness of the movie theater, within our minds, we sit unaware of the light behind us projecting onto the screen. We are mesmerized by the words, sights, and sounds of the show captivated by our emotions drawn into the storyline. Whenever we feel stuck in this life, we know for certain that we've forgotten our connection with the light of awareness. We have become lost in the movie and ignorant of the fact that we are in a theater in which the show will end at some future time. When the spectator is lost and the drama is playing on the screen, we are caught up in a reflection of reality. Instead of remembering, we are the source of light behind it. When we are looking at ourselves, our life's worth, and who we think we are, it is the perception of our karmic mind that colors this movie. The mind is a fantastic artist at shaping everything we believe reality is. As we become more aware each day that we are inside this awesome movie theater, we start seeing more frequently through the brilliant light of pure awareness shining on the screen. We realize in each moment how we are creating this entire movie show. We are the director, producer, and all the actors of our ultimate blockbuster show. So, no matter what old heavy backpack of karma we are carrying, no matter how gruesome or dark our movie has become, the movie continues to bounce its pictures off the blank screen, which nothing can ever stick to. The past karma we carry persistently tries to pester us, to test the strength of our awareness. It's attempting to awaken us to realize the truth. It does this for one reason. This universe wants us to experience the highest truth, that we are the light behind the projector, as well as the divinely inspired film. The blank screen and the witness who is sitting in the audience watching it all unfold. When realization happens, all we can see is enlightened clarity Everywhere we go, it cannot be unseen. 
this Buddha-like awareness burns through our karma like an ice cube melting under the blazing hot sun. Whatever ancestral patterns that were shaping our minds no longer have a hold on us. Karma cannot stick to the blazing light of awareness when realization is permanent, as long as realization comes and goes. So does our karma, so does our karma, it needs to serve its divine purpose until it is complete. As long as the ego persists in being hooked onto any aspect of our movie, resistance or desiring whatever is projected on our screen or locked in any judgment from someone in the audience, we cannot burn through the thick illusion and realize the truth. When the light of awareness is focused upon 24 hours a day and we fully surrender the ego to it, the karmic grip will eventually give up and dissolve completely. We will see in a sudden moment that we are the pure, effervescent, eternal light like the sun, which is forever burning brightly, and know that nothing can stick to us. You are an aperture through which this universe is looking at and exploring itself, Alan Watts. So the next obvious question is what can we do to change our perception of reality from the movie to the light and free ourselves from the confines of the mind? A burning desire to be free is enough. When we feel our suffering and become more aware of the karmic lens creating this movie, we start moving towards the back row of the theater and eventually on to the projection room itself, into the projection room itself. We can then step into the light that is generating every aspect of our lives. We realize our entire reality is radiating through this lens and see how our consciousness can transform the movie at any moment when the light of awareness is fully embodied. The experience of time, space, and even the limitations of the body are transcended, and you receive absolute confirmation that what you're experiencing is real. The karma we had carried for lifetimes, each one of those heavy and complex patterns from our past is revered with deep gratitude and respect. We see how each pattern was purposely designed to temporarily obscure our clarity of perception and give us an exquisite depth to growth. In the enlightened state, it's obvious that the karmic challenge is a gift from the divine. We see how it forces us to stop searching outside ourselves for answers and instead invites us to dive deeper into the awareness of our infinite spiritual path within. If any part of us clings to the movie, we start generating more karma. Our resilience in surrendering the ego is tested again and again and again. We must choose to continually let go of the mind and give ourselves over to the persistent, consistent, burning awareness of each thought that arises. As long as awareness sees everything it perceives as an illusion of the mind, then we remain free from our karma. We do not see things as they are. 
we see them as we are, the Nias Nin. Now, for the advanced spiritual seeker, knowing this truth intellectually still isn't enough to become fully self-realized. The patterns and programs of the mind are highly seductive, deeply hypnotic, and powerful. Very soon, the mind forgets the truth, often when life takes an unexpected turn. We quickly become lost in an intense or dramatic scene from the movie and are instantly transported back to our old, limited, yet secure ways of perceiving this reality. The ego mind is not wrong for behaving like this. It is simply acting on its survival mechanism, doing what it knows to create happiness. It is designed to help us survive and successfully navigate through the human experience in this world. When our soul has evolved enough and we burn with fervor to awaken from the dream and unplug from the matrix of the mind, only one thing remains to be completely free from our karma in this lifetime. The ego must completely surrender to the hopelessness of its plight, relinquish all attachment to the movie, and realize it is the light within the projector. After the ego realizes that everything it can do to try to spiritually awaken its futile, is absolutely futile. It sees how suffering has the most divine purpose and surrenders completely to God. It is at this stage we realize uh, that we are finally free and will no longer return to being lost in the entertaining drama of the movie theater again. Now this doesn't mean we stop enjoying life at all. Quite the opposite is true. We live from a liberated space within our consciousness, fully aware of all aspects of reality and recognizing ourselves as the creators of it. And as a result, the life we experience is filled with the greatest joy, bliss, and freedom. Lose yourself completely. Return to the root of the root of your own soul, Rumi. When our consciousness is fully self-realized, we become grateful for every little thing. We appreciate the setbacks, the challenges, our lack of awareness, and anything that clouds or alters our perception. Our burning awareness penetrates every aspect of the movie with the fire within us growing brighter each day, fueled by the eternal and unchanging nature of reality. It's clear that without something to obscure the truth or deceive us from reality, we wouldn't be as grateful to witness it in its full magnificence. We come to realize that life is a wonderful opportunity to completely surrender to our spiritual essence, cultivating profound power, clarity, and enlightened wisdom. When the light of awareness behind our projector is deeply honored and respected in each moment, Everything we see becomes an expression of God in a unique form. There are no longer any blocks or setbacks because the ego has taken the farthest seat back in the theater near the popcorn stand. Now, though we may receive signals that our enlightened perception is being challenged or distorted 
we are always guided by a higher spiritual power or over soul showing us the invitation to deepen our spiritual practice with each moment. Our spiritual work now is simply to be aware that we are deeply immersed in the enticing cinema show inside our minds and do the best we can 24 hours a day to return to the light of awareness that is shining upon ourselves and everything we see on the screen. We can do our best to appreciate the obstacles we are given from a spiritual perspective and understand them as opportunities for spiritual growth and deepen our awareness. We can use everything and everyone to help our light shine brighter and reach a deeper understanding of the purest light within. We can do our very best to not be attached to the movie, the part we are playing, nor the plot, narrative, or dramatic theme we are caught in. We can accept the perfection of the script and allow everything to be exactly as it is, even whatever our ego desires. We can release our attachment to extraneous involvement in the outcome of any desire bearing fruit. The more we stop being identified with the character we are playing in the movie and return to the light of awareness behind the projector, we realize who we are has nothing to do with the fruits of our labor in this external world. When we simply open to what is here, we discover our true face in every circumstance. Gangaji. Now the invitation for you now is to turn inward as often as possible, facing the limits of your perception and becoming keenly aware of the karmic patterns of suffering you keep repeating. Give yourself the opportunity to rise above them, not by fighting, but by observing how they are unfolding in the movie of your life. Practice seeing through the illusions you have created in your mind, even from the moment you wake up this morning. Take as much time as you need throughout the day to sit back from your mind and practice being the vibrant, conscious, electric light that is inside the projector. Clearly see how everything is a projection of your mind day and night. Notice what the main movie theme is in your inner theater and what dreams, desires, and inhibitions your ego is clinging to that fuel its motivation to heal from your past or create an improved future. A constant awareness of the light is the key to our spiritual awakening, propelling us to the next level of consciousness. What once felt slow and arduous becomes an instant ignition burning through ancestral illusions that have clouded the lens of our inner projector. Suddenly, the highest truth becomes unmistakably clear, revealing itself in every moment. We trust the divine movie our soul has chosen not just as actors, but as creators, directors, the audience witnessing this grand cosmic play. We know we've ascended to a higher dimension of existence 
when the burning light of awesomeness becomes an unshakable presence. In this space, the truth is undeniable. We are one with everything and everyone. Peace is no longer a fleeting state. It becomes our constant companion. We glide effortlessly through the river of life, aligned with the deeper rhythms of this universe. And no matter what scenes unfold before us, we remain in harmony with the cosmic dance, unshaken, unstoppable, and fully alive. This is not just spiritual evolution or awakening. It is the ultimate liberation. We experience the full blossoming of our infinite power and spirit. We see the light has always been within us. And now it shines brighter than ever, lighting the path ahead with clarity, power, brilliance. Each moment lights our way with wisdom, strength, and profound liberation. We are no longer bound by the illusions or karma of the past. We are now limitless, fully alive, and deeply eternal loving, all with the infinite reliance or radiance of our light and truth. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you, Lao Tzu. We emphasize as much as possible the direction I believe that many of us know it and are, we decide with ourselves that this is the direction we want to go. And it, it is a lot about mental, mind, ego. Because once we discover that in a way, in a way through the heart mind, we're not the boss, we begin to bring that childlike curiosity up and say, why is that? I'm beginning to recognize and embrace the God that I am within this body. And I'm discovering many things that I never knew existed. And it's kind of like a, you know, we spend all these lifetimes seeking, searching, climbing, reaching for something out there. Do we know where it, what it is? Not really. With that, but that's what we do. We keep climbing, reaching, wishing, pursuing something. It's what we all do, isn't it? And we don't stop doing that. We keep doing it in the hopes that we find what we're looking for. Do we find it? No. No. We find it when we decide to go within and practice staying within. This is when, you know, I've, I've shared that you, everything, all the answers to your questions throughout this life are within you. All of it is within you. One might say, so what? What's the outside for? Right? Why, why do we spend so much time looking out there, pursuing out there? Because it's, it's how we've been programmed. It really is. It's how others perceived, that others perceived, that others perceived, that we begin to perceive through others. 
until we on our own discover a whole lot more within us. And then we start looking without judging, and we just observe and say, well, okay, this is what I was taught, and so this is what I did, and I am grateful for that, because how do you know you wouldn't have reached the comprehension that you have reached had you not experienced all of that? If we sat in a cave, right, and we lived in a cave always, our eyesight would dim because it would be so dark. Our mobility would begin to atrophy because we couldn't get out. We didn't get out in fresh air and exercise. So in other words, our ability to transcend or go within is curtailed. Now some of us are in a cave and we're perfectly happy with that cave and we have no intention of leaving that cave which is fine. Okay? It's not negative, it's just what we decide to do. That's an experience, right? So you stay in the cave in life and then you eventually leave the body. Now you may say to yourself, as the God that you are, why the heck did I stay in that cave this whole life? Now it's through, it's done. And I didn't experience what I wanted to experience because I was convinced that the cave was safe. Is life safe? Is it? Sure it is. Is it exciting, adventuresome, challenging, perplexing, confusing, just to name a few? Yes, it is. But would we have it any other way? I don't believe so. And it's very true, uh, a quote from Osho, that which can be taken away from you is not worth keeping. And that which cannot be taken away from you. Why should one be afraid of its being taken away? It cannot be taken away. There is no possibility. You cannot lose your real treasure. What is your real treasure? The God that you are. The pure consciousness. That's your real treasure. So you, you know, many collect, you know, you get stuff, right? And you like stuff. You enjoy life. That's what we're here to do. We're here to enjoy life. So you enjoy things. Isn't it? But you know, see, every moment that you're enjoying those things, you know that they could be gone in an instant. And when you say to yourself, I'm okay with that. I have the opportunity to enjoy them while I enjoy them. Whatever it may be. It is, but truly embrace this. Not superficially. Many of us will embrace it superficially, which is just on the surface, not deep within. But then it kind of disintegrates. But when we embrace it through the heart-mind deep within, that conviction, that commitment, we're good to go. We know that, see? We know it. Yeah, I have it now. If I don't have it tomorrow, that's fine. If I do, that's fine. And one of, one of the most unnerving things for us is that the ego mind will do everything it can to rush us. You know what I mean? To get us, to accelerate us, to you know, have us go fast. This is why when you, you're looking for something, right? 
uh, that you want or desire. And it, you have a predisposed perspective that you want this, whatever, to occur at a specif specified time. And this is the way most of us are. Now, it doesn't, we become restless and we become hurried and then we want to push it, you know, accelerate it. I don't think any, any of us are exempt from that at all. We all experience it in different ways, shapes, and forms. But then you say to yourself, you know what? <laughs> it's, it'll take place when the universe determines the best time for it to take place. See, that's for us right now. We, we put this out to the universe and we're, we, we're very assured we, with ourselves that it will take place. That's it. The rest is up to the universe. We have implemented the manifestation. The universe then answers that and brings it in whenever that may be. Now, when we get, and the reason we get so hurried and at times so rushed, so frustrated, is because of what? We want it, and we want it in our time frame, period. And if it doesn't happen in our time frame, we become irritated, disappointed, frustrated. Okay. Then what happens? Doubt comes in. Uh, trust level drops. Confidence drops. Lower frequencies. And so what happens is, is that we usher in more of that. And this takes us right back to saying what? Mastering our thoughts. So we know what we put out there. See, we know what we put out there. When we've mastered our thoughts, we know what we put out there. So we're not second-guessing because that's all ego mind. We put it out there and we know that it will be. We don't know when, and that's, we're okay with that, but it will be, and we know that. And with that viewpoint, perspective, and we're not in a hurry, we're not forcing, we're not pushing, it happens. And about 99% of the time, when you, whatever it may be, ask for something through the universe, and you have specifics, right, that you believe, for you, is exactly what you want. Now, the universe does what? It begins to form it and bring it to you, send it to you. But when, it, when you do receive it, you notice that, wow, what I asked for and what I've just received is far more than what I asked for. This is amazing. Because the universe knows better than we do about ourselves. And when we, when we embrace that easily and fluidly, then you move into mastering manifestation. That's what happens. And what is it really? What, are, what the word manifestation, what, what is it really? We focus on something that we desire through the heart-mind, and then we create it. That's what happens. And interaction and collaboration with the universe. We create it. We take the energy. When we focus, we move and compile energy in whatever shape or form. And we take that energy and we move it into form. We create it into our reality and then we experience it.
It's like whatever we do focus on, we're going to create it and nothing can stop it. That's how truly powerful every one of us are within these bodies. See, while we're in these bodies, see, we use that to focus on certain directions. And we have the faith, trust, and confidence in ourselves and the universe 100% across the board where we absolutely know through the heart-mind that whatever we ask for, we will receive. A beautiful planet, right? Unpolluted. Clean. Pristine. You have no doubt. You, you have... You've got 100% trust, 100% faith, and 100% confidence in yourself and the universe. And you know what? It will happen. You might say, now the ego mind will come in and say, well, I'm just a little old me. How can I be that powerful? You see, there's doubt. And when that doubt comes in, it negates your true power. And we do this, and as time goes by, and certain things come into fruition, we learn, we experience. And you can imagine, let's say that we, we come to a point of transition and ascension where we're, we live in the body thousands of years. We're in the body thousands of years. How many of us, do you believe, would, will end up discovering the God within us, mastering our ego mind and our thoughts, presiding in the heart mind 24-7, and being at total peace 24-7. How do you think it would be? This is when I say this is all about you. This is an ego mind you. This is heart mind you. It's all about you. You discovering the different things that you've experienced in this life alone. What you have in your closet. Um clearing it out, embracing all of you, all of your good parts, all of your bad parts, all of your light, all of your dark, and embracing all of it and forgiving every aspect that you have carried with you, maybe not just this lifetime, maybe others, that you've been dragging this bag of crap with you and you finally decide, why am I dragging this bag? I don't need this bag. I'm going to let it go. I surrender it. And you don't do it with anger. You do it with love, gratitude, appreciation. You just let it go. Bye-bye. History. And whatever, whenever the ego mind tries to bring in anything like that, you just basically say, ego mind, you're not in charge here. I love you, but you're not in charge here. I'm grateful for you. All of us have these abilities. We have always had them, and we always will have them. Ever, beyond, and forever. All, and what we're doing is we're tapping into it, one step at a time. We're tapping into it. And we're discovering many things. And along the way, we're gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves at all times. And along the way, we're in the deepest of the purest eternal gratitude at all times. 
we maintain all this because our awareness becomes clearer, clearer, clearer. So in the quiet time of this meditation, know that you, you know deep within you that you are this omnipotently powerful supreme being that never dies within that body. That you are a master of creation. You can create anything. You can bring anything you choose into your existence and experience it. That's all of us. Oh, they've got stuff I couldn't even imagine uh, having those abilities. And the interesting thing is, is that you do. All along. And when you, when, when you discover this, it doesn't go away. It just stays and expands. It doesn't go away. It stays and expands. This is our spiritual evolution of this civilization, of this species, in the outer rim of the Milky Way galaxy. This is our discovery. And once you begin it, you will not care to turn away from it. Join me in the meditation. I'll return to close this out.
big and easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Relaxed into your body. Focus on the breath rising and falling in the space between heartbeats. Be gentle with every part of you that feels fearful, negative, unlovable, and unworthy. Allow your darkness to be felt, seen, and heard until it's fully emptied out. Let everything rise to the surface and be released into the light of your pure effervescence beam. It, and it's okay if others see this negative part of you because guess what? They have the same part too. They may not always recognize it, but once they look further back into the adolescent immature past, they'll find it. We all have these hidden dark parts within us. Even the greatest saints would be the first to admit their relationship with darkness. And if you ask a saint how they made peace with their dark side, they'd probably say, Oh, beloved, let your darkness come closer until it feels the warmth of your brilliant, glowing heart. You may try this yourself and see how amazed at how quickly darkness magically disappears. Then you'll realize a wonderful thing. Every saint and sinner out there share the same divine essence that is the container for them all. So don't avoid your darkness. Celebrate its existence and let your life be balanced. Be at peace because you have both dark and light within you. Make peace with both aspects of you with your super holy spiritual multidimensional nature. It's amazing how your light just keeps shining on and on and on and on like a billion-year-old star in the vast, infinite emptiness. Shine on. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night, following morning. And we will return here Sunday, October 20, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high. Deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest, the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times. No matter what's going on inside you or outside you. Open your heart and allow the magic to flow in.